Hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Julia Simone. I am a freelance director, animator, and designer in New York City. And I also teach at School of Visual Arts. Uh, I teach 3D motion graphics for um, design students in the, the SVA design department. And today I'd like to talk to you about this awesome spot. I had the pleasure of working with Hey Beautiful Jerk. It's a studio in New York City. Um, really awesome place. Uh, with a very creative name. <laughs> and uh, it was a series of three spots we did uh, over the summer for Yahoo, um, for their app, Fantasy Football app. And um, yeah, it took us a little less than a month to complete those three spots. And But before I go in more in depth uh, about the project, let me just quickly show you my reel. Thank you. Uh, so as you can see, a lot of my work is uh, network rebrands. And I also do some commercial work as well. And recently, I started to get into very strange, well, not, I guess they're not strange, but very large size um, screens. So the most recent one I completed was like 13K, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's just it's getting 13K LED screen. It's just it's getting really outrageous. But it's um, it just is also a whole different way of thinking about it. So I thought, you know, going from SD to HD was bad, but um, this is like a whole other thing. But it's it's fun too. So I, I enjoy um, that kind of um, change as well. So yeah. Oh, and I also got into VR. So I started uh, recently after watching uh, Steve Teeple present at Seagraph last year uh, for Maxon. I really just got inspired into creating visuals and VR as well, so using like Tilt Brush and Medium and uh, getting that um, working with Cinema 4D. It's, it's a, just a really great um, opportunity, I feel like, to explore. It's a whole new medium and a, um, it's just very, very exciting. So I'm definitely looking forward to just kind of honing my design um, and getting my um, kind of look down uh, and eventually making it profitable too. It would be great. Okay, but getting back to uh, the spots. So as I mentioned, a uh, really great team. Uh, I worked with an amazingly talented um, 3D artist, Andrew Hess, uh, and also um, the team there, um, Mark and Gina, also um, very, very talented guys. They're, they run Hey Beautiful Jerk, so um, shout out to them. And um, yeah, um, so let me show you the spots, finally. <laughs> Ken had a knack for finding gems on the waiver wire. So when injuries ravaged Ken's team, he found the next big name player. In little known running back, Kiko Jones Parker, Jankovic Jones Parker the third. Feel the winds, Kenneth. Only you saw the potential in Kiko Jones Parker Jet. Do I have to say the whole name again? It was so long. When Mike's girlfriend dumped him mid-season, he thought nothing would fill the void. Donald. Until he found something that filled it perfectly. <laughs> a 6'7 tight end with velvet soft hands on a rival's roster. Enjoy the extra bed space, Mike. Because champions deserve to sleep like kings. This is Tim. Tim won his fantasy football league once in 2008. And his league will never hear the end of it. 
Seriously, never. Because once a blind squirrel finds a nut, he never lets it go. Feel the winds, Tim. Feel them forever! Yeah! So, as you can see, it was a really, really fun three spots that we got to work on. So it was, um, it was just like an amazing way to spend my summer, just playing around with Cinema 4D with an, um, a very talented group of people as well. So uh, now let's talk about the breakdown. Of, so I'm going to break down three scenes that I worked on. Um, this one, the first one, was the lifting of the uh, dumbbell and um, just how I, I'm going to talk about how I rigged these characters that are sitting on the dumbbell and just um, just overall scene. Also, the tracking was done by Andrew Hess. He used the tracking system in uh, Cinema 4D for these emoji heads um, in the spot. Uh, and then the stadium was created by another artist. Uh, fireworks were done in uh, After Effects. So this is what we're going to talk about. Um, customizing toolbar, setting up IKs, and constraint tag. Um, so we're just going to jump back into Cinema. OK, so this is a scene. I'm just going to quickly go over what I did here, and then I'll break it down even more. Uh, so as you can see, I'm using the green screen footage as reference to um, animate two, basically, um, this barbell. There is um, uh, there's a motion tracker system in the Cinema 4D that tracks the motion. However, I felt that for this shot, it's, it's very simple. There's not a lot of depth. There's not a lot of movement. So I thought I could probably just do it by hand. And I just hand animated it. And it worked, you know, it worked fine and it worked quick uh, because I didn't really have a lot of time to kind of learn a uh, motion uh, tracker system in the amount of time that was given. So I decided that the best way was just to hand animate it. And usually, if you, that's one of the things that um, is important is when you get this pro like projects just to kind of assess the time and how much time you have because if you start going one on one path like the motion tracker and then you don't get it quite right then you you lost all this time so sometimes keyframing it and by hand is the fastest option um, so yeah so these guys are also actually hand animated so like I hand animated all of them um, just kind of falling off and etc. And I use a constraint tag on everything. So everything is constrained to the, um, the dumbbell bar. Um, OK. So that's, that's the scene I'm going to talk to you more about. So let's jump into the player. So I got this guy here. Um, let's see. Let me open the skin one. I use layers a lot. Uh, I find them to be very helpful and just keeping everything nice and clean and neat um, and orderly, like you know, naming things is important, putting things into layers is, is important, um, just so that if you ever use projects back and forth with people, it, like everybody is on the same page and can start working quickly. Um, so, so I set up some IKs, and that's what I'm going to talk about more. It's just, you know, very, it's a very, very simple rig. There's really not much going on here, um, so it's just, some uh, goals, so some controls for his legs. There are some controls for his arms because, again, the animation was very simple. I didn't, I'm not doing a walking cycle or any sort of like crazy animation that requires like a more extensive rig. Um, however, have any of you, any of you um, used Mixamo? Okay. Well, Mixamo is is um, is pretty awesome. Um, it creates, you create a character or you can uh, use their characters. And basically, you can apply these mocap um, onto, like here, you can download or upload a character. And then you rig it in Mixamo and it just applies these guys to it. Um, and I think, actually, Steve, Steve uh, Teeple has a really great tutorial on Cineversity. Um, this, this tutorial is really awesome. So if you are interested in character animation and just um, doing it fast and easy, I uh, definitely recommend checking out his tutorial as well. However, for my and my students love it too. Like they love using Mixamo because it's awesome. Like you can just you know rig like instantly. It's it's great. 
Um, and um, but for this guy, it didn't quite work because first of all, he's a low poly guy, and then um, I didn't model this. This was already existed when I came on board. He has like the mesh is not connected, so that's a problem with. Well, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a problem, but. Um, Mixamo doesn't like when mesh when it's disconnected, so it has to be one mesh. So then it doesn't know what to do with the polys. Like it doesn't know how to interpret them if it's not connected. Also, tall characters, short characters, it also has slight dif difficulties with that as well. Um, and again, because it's a simple animation, I just decided to hand rig it. I mean, and it was it worked fine. Okay. Um, oh, and another thing. Um, Setting up your um, palettes, so setting up your um, templates is um, something I do a lot. So like for this, I wanted to reset my PSRs, which means like the position and scale and rotation coordinates. Um, in uh, character animation, we do this a lot. So just everything sets out to zero. Um, because you know, as you can see, I move stuff around. And then getting it back to where it was, to the original position, is really hard unless you um, you know, zero out everything at the beginning and then do the reset PSR. And what it is, I'm going to show you now. It's, so I use um, shortcut, I use shift C to pull up the search command. And then, um, so reset, and there's my reset PSR. And I can drag it over on top here. So that docks my icon that I use a lot. So whatever icons you use a lot, it's helpful to have them up here so you don't have to keep constantly like, you know, shift C and then search and then doing that. Um, other ones that I use are um, null, actually. I like that one. Other ones that I use are scroll to first mm -mm. scroll to first active. So I'm just going to add them here and then select select children. Yeah. Ah, select. Mm. Children. All right. Great. So when you establish your icons and your um, setup here, what you can do is, especially if, if you're a freelancer, it's very, very helpful to just arrange Cinema 4D the way you like it, and then go into Window and um, Customization and save Layout As. And just you know, drop it into your Google Drive or whatever. And then if you're going to different places, you don't need to spend the time that I just did setting up all your icons that you use all the time. You can just you know, down, upload or download whatever the, um, the layout, the saved layout, and you're ready to go. And you don't have to you know, tell the producer, I'm sorry, like, it's going to take me some time to just set this up. Um, you're already ready. And that's, that's important. OK, so now that I have my PSR icon, I can just select all my stuff, click that, and it resets it to uh, its original position. So that's great. Um, OK, so now that we covered that, let's rig this guy. Um, let's use layers, actually. So turn this guy on, turn this one. That's not rigged. And uh, so we're just going to make his arm, I guess, move. Uh, so I'm going to select. Uh, this one and this one. So the top of his shoulder to this arm, because that's where I wanted to bend. And that's um, IK, inverse kinetics, kinetics um, as opposed to the other way um, to do this, which is, I think, I something. I forget what it's called. Anyways, uh, so Shift-C, again, uh, to search, IK, um, IK, create IK chain. And what that does, it creates um, automatically a goal for you. So now um, there is a, uh, a null here. Actually, it's in the, I think it's in the wrong position. I think I messed it up. Oh, because I didn't bind. <laughs> OK. I, I kind of got ahead of myself. So it's, uh, it is important to bind the character first. And what that is, it's, uh, so basically I'm going to select everything. So all my joints are selected, holding down Command, select my player guy. Um, and then I go into character, commands, bind. And so if that works for you, like if it actually worked, then you're going to get a little skin icon and the weights icon. And the weights we're going to get a little bit into a little bit later. I'm going to talk about that because that's important, this color dude. Um, and, um, but that's like a, a rabbit hole, really. Uh, 
Well, let's touch up on that a little bit. So, okay. Um, let me get out of this mode. And now we can do this. So now it should work. So we got the shoulder, the his wrist, and let's. Okay, that looks about right. Sweet. So now it now he's waving. We have a bit of a weight issue here, so we can correct that in a little bit. Um, but you can see that he's moving, and I have to remember to freeze the coordinates. So right now they're all over the place. And that's something that's very, very important, is that you don't want to leave them with those numbers. Because uh, if you do, and then you start changing things, you don't know what those numbers are. They're kind of crazy. They got like point something, something, something. So just make sure to um, uh, zero this stuff out. Um, so to do that, you can just freeze it, freezes it. It's all at zero. And now you're fine. Like Now you can just move this guy around, and then click Reset PSR, and it resets it to um, your original position. So. Uh, yeah, that's like one of those things, like one of my biggest pet peeves is when I get projects and things are kind of like all over the place and they're in the null and that null is like in like some weird position but then the other object is like somewhere way off and then I can't animate and then I have to change everything. And so yeah, just make sure to zero out your properties. That's like one big, if I can pass on anything, just make sure to zero out all your properties. Um, just when you're animating, it just makes things so much easier uh, to work with. So okay. So we got this guy, he's moving, so that was easy. Now we just have to go in, and we can do his leg as well. Um, just do that now while we're, while we're here. <laughs> uh, let's go with his thigh. And then, so we got the thigh, we got the foot. Uh, Shift-C. Yeah, create uh, my K, actually, my K. Create IK chain because we want that null. Uh, we got the null, so now we can bend his foot. Great. Uh, one thing that we should do is zero out the properties. I'm actually going to zero this out by hand and then freeze all. And now it's all good. It's moving. It's great. He can step. And we're done. Um, so, another quick thing. Bless you. Another thing is uh, display, just change it to, you can change your null to be something uh, bigger so you can see it better. Um, like a circle, you know, um, orientation could be XZ, and then you can kind of have a cl more clear uh, defined goal that you can um, move around. Also, you can go in and color code it. So in the null properties in basic, just change your color icon color, turn it on. And then use color on, and they can make it green or blue, or whatever it is. Um, there is a color code for when you're at, when you're doing um, uh, character rigging. There is a color code for the different uh, controllers, but um, I just kind of choose my own <laughs> until I get you know really really good at this. I'm just um, I'm just winging it. <laughs> Kind of. Anyways, all right. So we got this guy moving. So now, how did how did was this attached to uh, the barbell? Well, so we have him here, and and the barbell. So the barbell, um, the dumbbell bar actually is already rigged. Um, I have that set up. Oh no, it's not rigged. I think it's rigged. I think it's yeah, it's rigged. Uh, so what it does is. Let's see, it, so it does that, and then the, the other half does that as well. Um, so we can reset that to zero. So now, um, the way that I added this guy to the barbell, I mean dumbbell bar, is to, so first let's position him sitting on it. Uh, controls. And now we can, so we can move his leg around just to make it, have him sitting really quickly. Oh, well, another thing I forgot to mention is when you are rigging it by hand, just making sure that the skeleton is um, curved the right way. So when the knee, when you're doing like legs and stuff like that, it's not straight. So don't make your joints like straight 
straight, like they should have a slight bend to indicate which direction they should bend in when you're doing when you're adding IKs to it. So because if you're adding IK and then slightly bend the opposite way it should be bending, then it will bend that way. So just you know make sure like you know our curve, our spine is curved a little bit, so just take note of that as well. Um, yeah. Because sometimes you know things start moving the other way, and you're just like, "Why is it doing that?" And then you have to re-rig the whole thing again, and it's it's annoying. Because uh, it happened to me. Okay. So let's put this guy sitting in here. Wait, why am I okay? All right. So he's. Sitting, maybe we'll make his body go forward a little bit. That's fine. All right. Um, so to bind him, we're just gonna go uh, bind. So right click, character tags, and constraint. And now we need to find which joint the dumbbell bar is on, sitting on. And I believe it's on the right side because everything kind of got flipped. So. Joint nine, R joint nine. So in the constraint tag, we're just going to select um, parent. That's what I used. And go in here, and then just drop in the joint nine. And hopefully, let's see if that works. If we move him, now he's moving with it. So now he's constrained, and now you can do whatever you need to do. Wee! Oh. <laughs> So now everything's constrained to that, and then you can constrain, keep constraining, uh, constrain, yes, more things on top of this uh, barbell, dumbbell bar, or whatever it is, and it keeps it there, and that's great. And you can have the guy, you know, animating, and everything is staying locked together. And if you are doing character animation, also constraint tags. Uh, besides, there's a lot of options. Um, under the constraint tag, so there's a PSR constraint. There's all these, and they're extremely useful, not only in character animation, other other in motion graphics as well. Um, and that's how you pick things up. Like if you have a character, that's how it leans down and like picks up a ball or something like that. That's with a with a ta constraint tag. So um, check that out. It's um, I found it extremely useful. So for um, it, for some reason it takes a while for this because I just. And constraint everything, so everything is constrained here. Uh, yeah. So let's see what we got next. All of that. Oh, painting ways. Let's go back to the player, and that's where I had the issue. So if I move him out, that's where there's like a little bit of a breakage happening. So I have to go in and. Um, so there's player. There's the weight. My weight stat. Every yeah, so every joint has its color associated with. Um, so every joint kind of takes over um, the control for the part of the mesh. Um, so there's you know all these like so it it tries its best to figure out which part to control, but sometimes you have to go in and help it help it out. Uh, so and you can spend so much time just painting things. So right now you know this is kind of problematic because that's and so we can um, actually not do that let's go into my paint settings so I can add by so right now what I did was I found this joint and I was like well this should go with that so the paint what it should um, control should be added to this joint so I just go in and I start painting and you can start seeing that things are looking much better now. So from, so now he doesn't have that weird pull thing happening like it was before. So if I go back, there was that weird pull thing. But if I added more polygons, I painted more polygons, um, it went away. So it became a lot better now. Um, so that is that's kind of a quick and dirty painting weight. I mean. It gets really deep. Like you can get very, very into it. Like there's, you know, smoothing. There's just a lot um, you can do with that, and it's it is a rabbit hole. So, <laughs> um, but it's 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 good. It's fun. Okay. So this was like very quick. There's some. University has a really great tutorial on it um, by Brett, I think, um, for painting weights as well. 
So the next one I'm going to show you is I, um, I built this um, city, and then it was um, worked on by Andrew as well. Um, and um, the ask was, so can you do a fifth element futuristic city in a day? And I was like, ooh, <laughs> sure, I can try. Um, and how I went about it is I found this uh, great uh, future, free, free, free future city pack on Video Copilot. And so I used that in addition with other things, other models that I, I found online. Um, and I know there is a, there's a bit of, um, I guess, a purist uh, kind of feel that everything should be modeled from scratch. And yes, if I have you know, a week to do it, I'll do it. I'll gladly model it. It's not a problem. But if I'm given a day or so, then I feel like using pre-made models, pre-existing models on TurboSquid or anywhere else is fine. Like it's, you know, n if it gets the job done, it's, you know, I think it's okay. And, and do it. Because <laughs> these, these cars um, were also um, downloaded from TurboSquid as well. So, uh, okay. But the city is also very massive. Like the polygon count on this is extremely high. So what I usually do when I have a very high level of polygons in my scene is I go into options, level of detail, and I turn it to low. So because if I keep it at high, it's just it's a very difficult to work with it. So like, see, it, like, it kind of frees it. I mean, not frees it, but it takes a while to think about it. Um, so now you can see the highway here. Um, so if I go to, for instance, here, this camera, so you see these cars are going around the buildings. But if I turn on my level of detail to low, then things, um, then they kind of they go away. So it's just it's just a quicker way of, of working with it. But now you see like oh, don't be afraid of things starting to cut off like that. Like it's not going through the buildings, but if, because if I turn it back to high, it's gonna be okay. Um, so yeah, yeah. So I'm clicking on the camera and it's, it's just waiting a little, mm, waiting a little bit. Come on, I should turn it back to low now. Okay, I'm just going to change it to low, and that should be that should be fine. So there's different angles that I I rendered out and um, just build everything upon it. And this was like super, um, just just building things. There's not a lot of animation aside from this like futuristic highway where we finally have flying cars. I know, right? Like we've been waiting them for them forever. Um, so, but in this futuristic city, there actually are flying cars, and. Uh, Maybe they're self-driving too. Who knows? Okay. Uh, but what I relied on very heavily is uh, object buffers and ob object passes because what it looked originally. So this was. It's also a still too. Like if I probably if I had to redo this again, I might have um, not have used like real geometry. I might have just been like, well, it's a still. It's not really moving. The only thing that's moving are the cars. So I probably would have. Um, just made like a just a composite in Photoshop, but I didn't. I, I just I was like, sh yeah, 3D. I can play with cinema, and that's what I love to do. So any excuse, you know. Uh, okay. So once again, this was I didn't really light it. I think I had like a light or so on here. There wasn't really much going on. Um, and like I said, I relied very heavily on the um, my object passes. So like object buffers, and um, I just. I use a lot of the passes. Like I just add all these things so that I have a very good control in um, After Effects to just tone down the levels and just play around with all these different, you know, ambient occlusion paths and everything else, and just build it, build it from there, kind of like an artist just paints it, um, and that allows. And so that's really great. And yes, there is a whole thing about you know Redshift and Octane. And all of that, and that's great. Um, but I find that some the studios I work with don't necessarily have that. Um, I think the the studios I work with, m some of them have Arnold Five, but no one really has like Redshift and Octane available. So I, t I and the thing I tell my students too is just because they're always like Octane, right? That's it. That's all I have to do, right? Just Octane, push a button, and everything's beautiful. I'm like, no, you should learn how to do everything good and well and beautiful in standard, move up to physical, and then go explore all the other render engines out there. Um, so that's why I do 
standard render. Um, so yeah, object passes. So this is um, so it was. If I go and I find my original scene, uh, I believe. Yeah, so it looked like this coming out. And it's not really that pretty. Like, it's just like, nah, OK. Um, but then it went from that to this. So I did a lot of um, different, like, illumination and um, height map. So height map is, uh, requires a, some sort of a setup. So height map I use because what it allows me to do is it allows me to kind of, like, dissolve the bottom. So it's like a, you know, a gradient from top to bottom. So um, I can, it's like a depth pass, but reverse, if that makes sense. And I did a presentation on it like 2015. So if you guys want, you can check it out there. Um, talk about that, setting that up. Uh, but yeah, so then you know, I added all these like, uh, effects on it. Um, there is curves, there is chroma. I love chroma, like aber um, chromatic aberration, because um, it just makes things a little less like 3D-ish, I guess. Like it just dirties it up a little bit more. And then obviously there is a lot of like particular in there. There is a Saturn in the back. Uh, lens flares, don't forget lens flares. They're very important. Um, clients love them. So, so yeah, so from, you know, from something that looks like this to this, I relied only on the object passes, like the object buffers, et cetera, um, out of standard. So the, I'm just gonna quickly show you um, a scene that, to kind of how to set those up. Uh, let's go to, so again, like super simple, just a bunch of buildings. I'm gonna delete this for the purposes of demonstration. Um, yeah, I just got like two lights, I got a camera, a floor, um, I can delete this, this is not necessary, and the background. And then if I want to separate these buildings, so I create mats. So object buffers, what those are, are just basically black and white mats uh, that you can use to isolate individual elements in your scene. Uh, so to do that is, so if I wanted to get the whole, um, all the buildings at once, so I would just add, add it to the null here. So some of 4D tags, compositing, and then go in here, object buffer, turn it on. Now, if I want to go have the whole scene, so all the buildings, but then I also want to have it separate. Um, you just have to go in here and then go Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing, and then select one because that's your top of the, of the hierarchy um, is number one. So number one, and then you enable a second one. So number two is going to be your building A. Um, so that will keep one big chunk of the buildings, but then it will also separate them as well. So um, yeah, so I'm just going to add it to all of them, and then just make sure to change it. So it'll be three, four, five, and six. OK. And then here are my, again, my passes. So I have um, all of these passes for the buildings already set up. I have ambient occlusion. I use shadow, specular, diffuse, reflection a lot, and uh, depth. Oh. Uh, quick thing about depth, so you can use physical render to have really good depth, but sometimes, you know, the calculations in physical render take a little longer because they have to calculate the depth. Um, so my trick with that is I just use, with a standard render, I just use um, the camera. So to set that up, I'm going to turn off the lights because we don't need them right now. Turn off the lights, so uh, usually how it would, I'm going to turn this off. So right now, this is the, the camera you usually get. Um, but if you go into camera settings details and turn on the um, DOF map rear blur, then this part um, becomes available to play around with. So usually it's set at 2K. Um, so that's like the default position. Um, but I wanted to include more buildings, so I just changed it to 2700. 20, and then so from this end to this end, everything will be in focus. But from this point to this point, um, things will be going out of focus gradually. Um, and that is just a quick and dirty way to set it up. And then you add this depth pass in After Effects. And you use it with a lens blur effect. OK. So all the passes are here. So reflection, diffuse, specular shadow, illumination. And I just, I just add everything. And now we can go to 
and open up. Don't save. I think it was this one, yeah. Yes. Um, so let me grab what it looked like before. So this is what it came out looking like. It's very dull. It's, it's just meh. I mean, it's, it's fine, but it's not something I would show a client ever. Um, so then it went from that to this a little bit, uh, because I added the blur here. And now it looks like this. And this is, this is good. Like, it's not amazing, but it's good. And I think for the amount of time that we usually get um, to sell, to pitch a project, it's very short. So you got to think really quickly and just build things to just sell the idea. And then you, you, know, you buy the time to really work it out. So getting it to a good level where a client will be like, oh, it's all, like, he will, they might think that it's ready. You know it probably is not, but it's enough to sell the idea, and that's what's important. Um, so, and that Cinema 4D with all the um, passes and everything else allows you to do that. So if I just, you know, I have my curves on, I have a little dirty texture on there, I have a lens flare, and I have like um, some overlays, etc. So, you know, obviously I have my um, ambient occlusion on it as well because, and also with ambient occlusion as well, I like to do two passes, one without ambient occlusion, so I can really, really control it. And then one with just ambient occlusion, I can overlay on top and just tone it down because sometimes when you um, bake it all together, it just comes out too dark. So having that control is also important. Okay. So cars. Um, and they're moving. So the way to do this, um, they're basically, I can't really scrub through this, so maybe I'll scrub through. Um, so there are some of the flying cars, if I can get to them, in the background, so these guys. Um, so they're moving just continuously. And the way to do this really, really quickly is you just go in, create a spline. Um, so we're just going to do a quick spline here. And that's fine. And then we'll add uh, a sphere, for instance. Make it five. No, maybe a little more, maybe 15. Centimeters, okay. Um, perhaps put it in a cloner. So that goes in the cloner. Um, and then object, spline, um, step. So it's even, for instance. And then there is a really cool thing in the cloner, rate. Um, and you just up that, and it starts moving. And it moves, and it's great. And then you can add variation to it, so it's not all like going the same speed. So it just varies it up a little bit, and that's what I use for cars. So it's just just spreading that out, just you know, um, also cloning the the cars and just um, breaking them up a little bit. So yeah, the rate is like is is really helpful, and I I think you can create like really great animations really quick with it. So I think we're on to uh, the brains. Yeah, so once again, the brains were a model I found online. Um, uh, I did texture it because it needed to get that like funky uh, brain medical feeling to it. And then the eye rig, I, um, I found it on uh, on. Uh, this site. So Stefan has a really amazing um, eye rig available. So it just follows the eyes. It's just, it's really intuitive. It's it's really great. So I use that um, together. Uh, let's see, where is it? Brains. Okay, so there's, a, there's my floating brains. And I'm using the eye rig here. So the eye controllers to move the eyes around. I took off the eyelids and then um, I was asked to just make them, because it looked a little cartoony at the time, so I was asked to make the eyes look a little more bloodshot eyed. Um, so I use noise for that, uh, noise cranial, and it worked really well. It gave that like very tired look, <laughs> like they stayed up all night listening to this guy brag about his uh, trophy. 
and uh, yeah, and they just um, they're kind of the only animation I added was they just kind of floating up and down, and uh, let's see, let me pull it up really quickly. Uh, timeline. Oh, I guess we can use that. Uh, so there's um, a really great tool. And hold on a second. So, well, it's oscillating. To oscillate these guys to make them loop, and I can't find it at the moment. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So I had to click on this guy, and it's, it's got this animation. So all I had to do is just keyframe two points. And then um, there is properties that come up for the keyframes. And I just selected after I wanted to oscillate because I just wanted to um, just keep mm, that constant. Oscillate. There we go. And then it just keeps on going. The animation just keeps on going. So um, I don't have to do too much keyframing, which is always a good thing. Uh, so yeah, so this is it, and let's watch the spot again. Ken had a knack for finding gems on the waiver wire. So when injuries ravaged Ken's team, he found the next big name player. In little known running back Kiko Jones Parker, Jankovic Jones Parker the third. Feel the winds, Kenneth. Only you saw the potential in Kiko Jones Parker Jet. Do I have to say the whole name again? It was so long. When Mike's girlfriend dumped him mid-season, he thought nothing would fill the void. Until he found something that filled it perfectly. A 6'7 tight end with velvet soft hands on a rival's roster. Enjoy the extra bed space, Mike. Because champions deserve to sleep like kings. This is Tim. Tim won his fantasy football league once in 2008. And his league will never hear the end of it. Seriously, never. Because once a blind squirrel finds a nut, he never lets it go. Feel the winds, Tim. Feel them forever! Yeah! So again, I uh, just want to thank Mark and Gina uh, of Hey Beautiful Jerk and for letting me work on this awesome um, spots and because it was a real pleasure. So thank you guys um, for listening and I hope, I hope you, you learn and, and, and got inspired um, because I really love Cinema 4D and I love working in it and um, I really appreciate having the opportunity to come out here and share my love with you. So thank you. <laughs>